Um, I think what we can do now is that if people have questions or comments, they can direct questions either to any of the, the, uh, the speakers. Maybe sit over there. That's fine. Yeah, we can have a, a, a discussion. We do have some people in other places. Um, the, um, and we can have a relatively freewheeling discussion. We're, there's not a lot of people that are right here, so um, perhaps we can just open the floor to uh, questions or comments. And please direct them to an individual, or if you wish, just to everybody. I just want to thank the presenters. You know, it's very good. It was very informative, especially Judy and uh, Harry. It, it's just some of the things you just, you know, can't color everything, and therefore you can't read. And so, what other people cover, it's really very helpful, you know, really, really helpful. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Olivia. I, I wonder if I would like to direct a, a question to Wajigan. Um, Wait. If, yeah. If I could do so. Um, I'm wondering if you could give us a sense of how uh, the situation in Palestine, of what it is, and how it influences the U.S. Uh, uh, the U.S. actions in the greater Middle East? Um, well, the situation uh, being uh, under occupation is uh, very detrimental. Um, Gaza is uh, like a, a big concentration camp. And um, uh, I would like to see the United States uh, play a more um, peaceful rule and um, just bring peace to the region. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, do you, uh, in, in, the, in regards to that, does, does it, um, I mean, one thing that I know that might be really help, helpful for the people around the Middle East to see is how resilient the Palestinian have been. I mean, slowly, if you see the map, their, their area is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and just being almost non-existence almost. And yet, I think the inspiration they bring to people, just being there for years and years and years and being able to continue to talk about self-determination and the right for the Palestinian to exist and to write for them to have a homeland which was taken away from them. It's almost like an inspiration to a lot of the countries and a lot of the people in the Middle East that um, you know they know that the United States have been able to kind of, uh, kind of almost, I would say, totally destroy the whole landscape and the whole, um, geopolitical situation in where even I don't know how Jordan feels right now in the midst of all what's going on around the area because if if Syria goes you know that that will not be helpful at all to the Palestinians it won't be helpful at all to uh, Iraq or Iran themselves, you know. So, and but the fact that the Palestinians in that enclave been able to really hold on, I think that their inspiration and to keep the world abreast of how their struggle is evolving, even though it's very, very difficult. I think the the, the struggle against the sanctions, the the uh, the uh, not not the sa I'm talking about boycott. The boycott is really taking on, you know, uh, a very significant part of the, the struggle in their survival. 
And there's a lot of activities going on in, in the Palestinian mm -hmm. grouping, I think. Uh, just may, maybe mention that next, uh, the 9th and the 10th, uh, so uh, her name is Susie Bohoa. Susie will be in Rochester. She's going to be uh, speaking at both on the 9th and the 10th, sponsored by the Christians um, with Witnessing Palestine. And uh, the, she's a internationally renowned writer, and she has a lot of po has a lot of poetry. And if people can go and, and, and listen to her, I think that would be really, really good.